New York State. And uh, with this roadblock here, we're uh, getting them going in both directions. With your eyes closed and your head tipped back, right. with your right index finger, I want you to touch the tip of your nose. We're going to give it top priority to see if we can save lives one way or the other. But despite the police efforts, drunk driving accidents still occur. And when they do, it's up to rescue squads like this one from the Sound Beach Fire Department in Greenwich to minimize their effects. Steve Gruno's squad volunteered to show us how they extricate trapped passengers. In many cases, the cars collapse to a great de degree. Uh, you find that the um, people's ankles will break and they're caught, caught and stuck in behind the brake pedal or the gas pedal. The uh, dashboard will come down on them, the steering wheel will go down and uh, give them a chest injury. Sometimes we have people we can save and sometimes we have people who it's, uh, it's too late for. Let's go! I'm driving. Don't drive National media campaigns and organizations like MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, have brought this problem to the public's attention, like few social issues in the past. Let me drive. <laughs> Friends die from drinking and driving. It appears attitudes are changing, but there will always be a few who feel they can drive safely after drinking. This 16-year-old totaled his last car after drinking eight beers. I had just left the party. I was about a mile down the road, and I was kind of, you know, had my beer muscles, as you put it. You know, I, you think you can do a little more than you can after you've been drinking, and I went too far, and... It's Tonight he has drunk 11 beers. Well, I mean, I can drive. I mean, maybe not as safe as if I didn't drink, but I, I feel I can drive to get myself home. To provide an alternative, Safe Rides was founded two years ago. Greenwich Safe Rides. Um, is this a drug or alcohol related problem? Greenwich to 361. We're leaving base now to pick up the two passengers in Round Hill. There's too many people out there driving drunk, and we've had a lot of people over the last few years, you know, getting killed, and you really don't want one of your friends to get killed, so we're out here to make sure that they get home safely. Mark and Lori are Greenwich teens who volunteer on weekend nights to drive inebriated drivers or their stranded passengers home. You work from about 10 to 2, and you're really tired when you get home, but you have a really good feeling, like you're satisfied that you've done something to help everyone and your friends. And you know, even if, I mean, if you give one friend a ride home, or even if it's not a friend, you feel so much better that you've really done something. Here they are, they're, they're, they're young adults, and they're giving up their Friday and Saturday nights to help their peers get home. I think that's quite a statement. I don't know too many adults that would say, well, I won't go to that party tonight, I'm going to stay home and drive the rest of the adults who've had too much to drink home. I don't know too many adults that would do that. Steve Hatch is the only adult on the board of Safe Rides. This is a program run by teens four teens, and is sponsored by the Red Cross. Tonight, Steve's son, Scott, is the dispatcher. Okay, we should be about 20 minutes to a half hour. All right, Pa. If we just get one child home uh, during the course of the whole year, safely, it's been worth it. We were a little bit od so we figured no, we'd call it safe no, ride. No, no. We just didn't want to have to drive in order to, you know, get an action or something like that. It's very difficult. <clears throat> to document things that don't happen and hopefully with the uh, safe rides program things don't happen such as accidents um, have they saved lives well we don't know but i'm sure they have and uh, we certainly support uh, their efforts you are not going to eliminate the problem today it may take years to eliminate uh, alcohol out of our society Today we have the problem. Today we need safe ride. In a moment, we'll take a look at other ways Greenwich is fighting back. Kids are gonna drink and there's nothing that one group of parents can do about the whole problem. Knowing how to put yourself at risk and and how to take chances, and what those chances are, what, what the consequences are going to be. And that's what part of growing up is. But to, 
to do heavy drinking of hard alcohol at age 12 or 14, I think is a risk they don't understand the consequences of, and somebody has to tell them, no, that's not right. What a parent should do, how parental attitudes and behavior affect their children, are questions one group of Greenwich parents agree to discuss with us. I think parents have responsibility to say, hey, no, you can't drink. Now, that doesn't mean that the kid's not going to drink occasionally or, or who knows. But at least you are setting a very firm standard. Everywhere I go, at some point or other, alcohol is served. And the point is the children are not blind. Uh, they're not impervious to the example that we're setting. You, I mean, you have to communicate to them that they're kids. I mean, you're, you're acting as if these are little adults walking around and they're and getting... They have to understand that they're underage and that they're kids and they're not adults. Yeah, but they're not kids either. They're adolescents. No, no. Adolescents aren't kids and they're not no, adults. They're, they're in a difficult in-between age. What parents don't realize is that kids need more monitoring more direction, more limit setting for them at that period in their lives they ever needed. They really need parents there for them. It's the most critical period of their lives. Levels of teenage use of alcohol are related to perceptions of their parents' attitudes, according to a national survey of high school students. Of the boys who felt that their parents disapproved of boys drinking, only 17% were heavier drinkers, compared to 35% who felt their parents approved. And there were similar patterns reported among high school girls. I know my parents didn't like me drinking. And sometimes late at night when I was up late, I'd be able to hear them talking about me. And so that's one of the reasons why I stopped drinking. What we're talking about is the fact that kids are in, in drinking more and more at a younger age, not just on prom nights. Mm -hmm. In my case, my mother is very anti-alcohol and it's been a problem for me i try to handle it more responsibly because some people may be looking at me in a certain way but also other times i feel rebellious because of how much she's um tried to take liquor away from me christie's mother is suzanne prunier co-chairperson of parents together a community organization that has explored a wide range of parenting issues since their founding in 1981 but this spring, they attain widespread notice when they called for parents to sign a pledge, a parents' pledge, to supervise house parties, the major social outlet in Greenwich for underage drinking. The other communities around the country are addressing the very same problem and have used uh, uh, a vehicle such as making a pledge that you will not serve alcohol to your kids and, and, and putting it in writing. Um, as a way to raise consciousness and also to lower their anxiety level that they're not alone because you know their kids will tell them they're alone you're the only one that's not going to serve alcohol or let their kids drink i think there's a missing part of that pledge school superintendent ernest fleischman which says that we as parents aren't going to undertake activities in our own home with adults that uh, will represent poor poor behavior for parents in in relation to students adults I have a good time, and drinking is associated with it. So uh, a teenager who's 17 and 18 years old, it's, it's going to be the same thing. I don't, I don't see any difference. I think there are plenty of indications in this community early where our students see their parents abusing alcohol. There's plenty of examples in, in Greenwich. That's no excuse for the students to abuse, but it means we have to look at ourselves first, before, even before we start looking at our students. Um, it's a double-edged uh, sword. I've uh, found myself watching what I drink, many times not drinking at all, because the easy thing is to drink, and then I say, they're watching that, I'm watching it. It's kind of like look, looking in the mirror and saying, maybe I don't uh, really need to have any drinks tonight. They may be laughing at me saying, I know he wants to have a cocktail tonight, but I don't do it. Dick Gildersleeve owns restaurants and bars in the area, and in addition to his personal pledge, he's offered an alternative for Greenwich teens. For the past two summers, he's opened Little Dick's in Porchester for No Booze Tuesdays. It's representative of the juice bar trend, which will probably strengthen as the drinking age moves to 21, and as attitudes toward alcohol change, for they are changing. Adult alcohol consumption in America is declining, and in area bars, low alcohol beers, wines, and wine coolers are big sellers. So people are changing. I mean, if you, put, if you brought all this stuff in and nobody bought it, you wouldn't do it very long. It's working because people seem to want it.
Providing an alternative for teens is a problem that has long challenged Greenwich parents. Where can these kids go when night falls where there is something to do other than drink? The idea of a community teen center has been talked of for years, but not accomplished. In the meantime, Bruce Marchfelder, who teaches windsurfing in Greenwich, has offered an option that he hopes will spark real change. We have plenty of rehabilitation programs, but we have very few habilitation programs. There's a very few programs that teach people how to deal with living in a high-pressure community. What I want to see is some real, constructive, tangible alternatives. Because the drinking and drug problem is a symptom. It is not the problem. It is a symptom of a greater a greater cancer, and it's just a band-aid on that cancer. I like one. How about the Spider-Man glasses? You have to just make the kids change their attitudes towards themselves and towards each other so that they just don't need it anymore. On weekends during the school year, senior high students under Bruce's supervision turn a room at Christ Church into an alcohol-free nightclub. Some people don't want to come here because they don't want to part with their, you know, weekend drink, but a lot of people, they come here because they respect it. I don't know, the alcohol, it's getting now that it's getting boring. In a problem like this, you have to be incredibly imaginative and incredibly creative. A sign on the door suggests that those who want to drink or do drugs go elsewhere. Here, the options are alcohol-free cocktails and dancing. Margaret is the regular DJ. Greenwich is wealthy. The kids can afford cocaine, unfortunately. The kids can afford that stuff. They're given allowances a week that can you know, support a pretty large drug habit. So um, I think a lot of people probably don't come here or, you know, because of that and maybe go to bars. So with the drinking age going up to 21, you know, the juice bars are going to become the wave of the future, I think. And you can say I'm sure that people arrive at the cafe drunk. When I was dealing with this with parents and uh, talking about this, this cafe, they said, well, you're not going to let them in. They said, that's quite the contrary. Those are exactly the people we want in. We want to get them inside. We want to show them a good time, get the alcohol out of them, and then drive home safely. The cafe draws in 200 teens a night. But even Bruce isn't sure that alternatives like this will be enough. Someone said something really frightening to me the other day that, that sort of smack me between the eyes um, that is that we've lost this group we've lost any chances with this generation we really should be starting to work with fifth and sixth graders when we come back we'll look at a new program that starts even earlier with eight-year-olds in the third grade if we don't get them before they're 10 years old if we don't reach them then we've missed the boat anything the cook dishes out but Peter what do you think those words mean we began our report as one school year was ending and as a new school year was hitting its stride. We took a look at a new pilot program for some of the area's third graders. Are these children too young to learn about the possible dangers of alcohol and other drug abuse? Not according to one classroom classic. Remember Weekly Reader? Well, for the past couple of years, alcohol and drug news have made the front page of this publication because of a survey they conducted back in 1983. Now, among other things, they found that about 30% of fourth graders felt peer pressure to drink. Statistics like those have prompted early prevention in our schools. And this fall, a new intensive program has been started here at the Greenwich Country Day School. I've got a lot to tell you about about Project Charlie. Project Charlie was developed in Minnesota in a community much like Greenwich outside of Minneapolis. Charlie is an acronym. It stands for Chemical Abuse Resolution Lies in Education. I was working with the program for three years in Minnesota and when I moved here to Greenwich I was anxious to get it started in some of the schools. Ginger Copy found sponsorship by the Junior League of Greenwich and this year, Project Charlie is being tried out here and at Brunswick School, another private school in the area. One day a week throughout the year, Ginger will come to this class for a 40-minute discussion. What are drugs? Who knows? Project Charlie is a primary prevention program. It's not just a drug information program. It starts with the primary causes that lead kids to get involved with drugs. I know that all of you don't have those kinds of special powers to heal, but you all have very special qualities. The curriculum is divided up into four segments, and it builds sequentially. The first one is self-awareness, 
We I'd... talk a lot about feelings, mm -hmm. about their strengths and weaknesses, about their unique characteristics. I like talking and telling how I felt. Mad. Mm -hmm. Tell us a time you felt mad. When my brother bit me. Ooh, that would make me mad, too. And my sister. Oh, dear. <laughs> My goodness. Well, it made me feel good. The second one is relationships. We talk about a lot about peer pressure, about the you know, things that other kids might try to get them to do. The third is decision making. We go through a whole process and teach the kids how they can make decisions. And finally, in the upper grades, in fifth or sixth grade, we give them concrete drug information. Studies on 10th graders in Minnesota who've completed this program indicate they begin experimenting at a later age and use alcohol and drugs less frequently than other students. The public schools in Greenwich have a similar program for kindergarten through third grade called Caring for Myself and have decided just this fall to include Project Charlie in next year's curriculum. But as John Ayeski, head of the lower school here, points out, the schools cannot solve the problem alone. I do think it's something that the community has to adopt. I think it's something that the parents have to be involved in, that the teachers have to be involved in, and also that the children are involved in, too. And I think when you have all those groups working together, it really will benefit the children. This community is a microcosm of many communities. I hope what's different is the fact that we recognize we have a problem, that we're willing to take some risks and try some programs. I'm convinced that we have a chance of succeeding if we join a partnership with our parents, with our churches and synagogues, community agencies, and the schools. There is a hope of succeeding. Greenwich, Connecticut is a town working toward a solution to the teenage alcohol abuse problem. Community organizations, the schools, police, parents, the students, they're all aware of the pitfalls of the past. This is the future. Perhaps this is where we begin. For Channel 7 Special Reports, I'm Ernie Anastas.